your life. Now, Osof Mami, you yeah. lived in Liberia for 15 years before coming to Ghana. Yeah. Tell us a, yeah. le- a little bit about life growing up in, in a different country. How was life yeah. like growing up? Well, I wouldn't say it was the same country because that's where I was born. So mm-hmm. all I knew is that that is my country. Mm-hmm. Yes, because mm-hmm. I don't know any other country apart from there. Apart then. from there. Yeah, so it was like a normal child growing up. Nothing new. We had everything we wanted because my parents were okay. You know, they were making sure they were giving us everything we wanted. My mm-hmm. parents were sh- like they were disciplinarian. They brought us up in that Christian background. And so our lives were instilled with the word of God. Mm. We we're not just living any life. Yes. And even by then, I didn't even know Christ. I didn't know mm. anything. So I finally gave my life to Christ and decided to do the work of God when I came to Ghana. Because my mm. father made me to understand the Ghanaians. Mom is a, a fancy, my dad is a gun. Okay. So he told me, one day, one day, you come back to your home. Mm-hmm. So you should get ready. Yes. So that was in 96 when we came to Ghana. Then my mom made us to understand that she's going through a whole lot, even though in Liberia. And mm-hmm. one of the things that really helped her was putting her trust in God. So mm-hmm. if we really wanted to put on in life, we wanted to live long, we wanted to protect her, we should put our trust in God. And that was how the love for God grew. So growing up in Liberia was just a normal, innocent child who knew mm. nothing. Yes, that's how it was. Wow. Wow, this is amazing. And um, I want to take you back a little. Now, when you moved to Ghana due to the war, uh, and I believe 15 years, you would have seen one or two things. Um, sure. When did you? Uh, what did you really see at that time, or did you leave before the war broke out, or the war in the middle of the war where you did, your parents decided to move to Ghana? What did you really see during that time? I saw a lot of things. Mm. Uh, most of my friends from school decided to join, you know, the fighters because they wanted to protect themselves. Wow, they didn't as, want to as die. young as young as what age? At you know, most of my friends, 12 years, 13 years, 10, mm. 9. Yes, even when you come to library and talk about who were the toughest fighters, mm. they were the ones who were the smaller kids. Wow. Because the smaller kids were rather empowered, given a lot of medicine and stuff, mm. you know, to do that. So most of the fighters, they are leaders or the groups, they are leaders with children, not the elderly ones. Wow. So that means they recruited I, the younger ones. Yes, yes. Wow. I saw people die. I lost most of my classmates. I lost most of my family members from the war. I saw dead bodies all over the place. Mm. A lot. Mm. I saw a mm. lot of things. There, wow. were, there was a time that um, they were shooting seriously, and my mom and dad took all of us inside, locked the door. Whilst inside, we had a knock. I think mm. she had already prepared food for us to eat. So when we heard the knock, we had to open the door. Then the fighters just, just rushed inside the house. Mm. Then they asked my dad, what is he doing here? And he said, I'm in my house. <laughs> what do you expect? Mm. He said, but he told somebody to leave this area and go to another area. Why haven't you left? And my dad said, you want me to leave? Or you can't be steal my things. That's what you want me to do. This is mm. my house. So what do I want to do to you? My dad was very big. Mm. Then they said, stand aside. What do you have in this house? My dad said, I don't have anything. We just finished cooking. We we're about to eat before we heard that people should lock up or they should if they are not safe. But me, I'm staying in my house. So that is about that. Then he said, we are hungry. We need food. Hmm. So my mom had to take the food and everything, poured it into a big bowl, including hmm. the stew and everything, and gave hmm. it to them to eat. Mm. Afterwards, one of the rebels said he had a saw in his leg because he was shot mm. by uh, uh, one soldier. So he needed the saw, saw to be chewed. My mom had to put water on the fire, clean the saw, dress it well, and put the plaster and the bandage around it. Mm. Then they said, oh, from today, uh, we are not going to do anything to you guys. We are going to protect your house. So if there is anything, you just give us a call. We will protect you. So since that time, 
they were always around our place making sure they would protect us against wow. anybody who wants to come to us mm. when they go and go and steal from some people they come hey, mommy daddy we have some things here what do you want my dad said i have learned in this life to sweat and work hard and get my own things i don't want anybody's property so mm. take it out of my place mm. since you said you have to protect me that's all i need from you and that's how it was for years and years before we came together. So most of the terrible things, I can't even remember one scenario. My mom sent me to the market to get some items. As long mm. as I was, I think 11 years old. Whilst I was running back, I heard people shooting, shooting all over the place. The whole place in the market was cut. I didn't know where to go because I was so small. I yeah. didn't know. I was running and running and running all over people. It's sometimes amazing because where you'll be running to, someone will also be running from that place. That's they right. don't even know where, where to, to go. Mm. Yeah. So as I was running, I heard this guy screaming, running past me, but with his, his hand by his side. So later he stopped at the place for a while, not knowing he had been shot at stable. Mm. So his intestines were coming out. That was the very first time I saw a human intestine. My God. My God. <laughs> it was coming out. So he had to push it back in, you know, to hold it and run. Mm. And so as I was running, I got to a place. My mom saw me from my house. She started screaming, Rose, Rose, run, run, run. And I ran. My mom held me and just threw me inside of the house. And I was mm. like, wow. And that's one of the reasons why. When I am on stage ministry, I'm mm -hmm. a different person. That's right. Because I think about all those things that I saw, the people who died, and mm. I asked myself, what's different from those people? No. Even that time, I didn't even know who Christ was. I had oh, not God. given my life. I still, Christ protected me till mm. now. He alone deserves my praise. And my, my God. That's mm. one of the main reason why I chose to do music and even gospel music. I didn't my tell God. the world about things and the great things God has done. So when you listen to my songs, you always realize that my songs are times different songs, songs mm. that testimony. I always want to tell people about the good things God has done. So mm. I saw the experience a lot, but God was faithful. But God was faithful. I mean, telling me now, it looks like I'm watching a movie, <laughs> but it was a yeah. reality. Wow. Now, yes. uh, forgive me because sometimes I want people to know where you're coming from and and, sure. and when they see you minister, they will understand where you began from and all that. At that tender age of 15 years, seeing all these things, yeah. how impactful did this thing make on your life? There were times I cry in the room and my mom would be asking me why I'm crying. And I tell her, I'm scared to die. <laughs> she mm. said, why am I thinking like that as a small child? I said, yes, because I've seen that human beings are not. Mm. If my friends are even two today, family members or people in my neighborhood I knew dying. Anything can happen to anybody any time. You know, so it, it, it had that problem, even for my mom like this. When we got to Ghana at first, when she hears knockout, mm. she has a problem with her heart. Mm. Because it reminds her about the shootings and all those things. Yeah. So it wasn't easy for us when she came at first. When you hear knockout and all those things, it brings that fear in us. Yeah. You know, thinking that, oh, maybe something is going to happen to us here in Ghana the same way like it happened to us in Liberia. So we had a very, very bad effect in our lives. But when we got to Ghana, we realized that all those things are processes of life. We need to go through them. Mm. And the word of God has always strengthened us. So we decided to just be strong mm. and be strong in the Lord. Yes. And be strong in the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, just in case you just joined in, I'm having a great chat with Osof Mami Rose EJ, telling us her life experience and the thing that she has been through. Seeing her is a glory that we have to give to God. Keep sharing your, um, your the, the program. Keep bringing in your comments and everything. Now, also, Mami, tell me this. There are some countries um, that are now still engaged in wars and whatever. With your experience, what would be your advice to youth who are now trying to cause commotion in a peaceful country? With your experience, what would be your advice to such youth 
I would always encourage them not to be involved in whatever they've seen. You know, it takes two to start a fight. Sometimes you might think that, oh, I'm saying this, and I will hurt you, I will do this, it means nothing. But it really causes a whole lot of issues. Mm -hmm. And that is one of the things we realize. As youth, we are the future leaders. When we destroy ourselves, we allow the leaders to confuse us and let us fight. When you are dead and gone, mm. who is going to look after your mother? Who is going to look after your family? You know, what can you do for your nation? I would prefer that you rather have all yourself to be used by God and do the things of God than to let leaders confuse you to kill your own family, to kill your own friend, all because of war. You understand? Or maybe you don't understand certain things. We are two different people. Even twins, they still don't have one mind. Mm -hmm. So the fact that you understand something or you accept something, it doesn't mean that everybody around you would accept it and accept it. We are different people, different hearts, and different minds. So mm -hmm. I would just say to encourage them not to get themselves involved. If anybody wants to start a fight, allow him to fight. Let him bring his own family members and his own children to fight. When they are dead and gone, then you can take them to fight. Don't get yourself involved. It, war is not a good thing. The experience I had, I would not even wish for my, 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 my worst enemy. Mm. The war is not a good experience. It is not at all. Wow, great piece of advice coming from the camp of us of Mami Rosa J. Don't get yourself involved. Enjoy the peace that God has given to you. Now, let's come this way. You told me when you, 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 you accepted Jesus and everything due to this. Now, would you share your encounter? How did your turning point happen we want to know because any gospel musician that comes on i want to know that you are truly born again uh, not not yeah. just uh, uh you know that shakara move maybe <laughs> 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 tell yourself mommy how was your encounter like when you finally said lord i am all yours well my encounter wasn't like so extra, but let me tell you the story of my life a little bit, then I'll get into the encounter. All right. I remember my mom told me before she gave birth to me, mm. she was always giving birth to birth. So she wanted a girl child. She had mm. prayed to God so many times. Anytime she gives birth, it's a boy. Because she said her firstborn was a boy, he passed mm. away. Mm. Then she gave birth to a set of twins, they were boys, and mm. they passed away. Mm. So she gave birth again, which should have been the third born, but he lived. So he's now an elder brother. The first she mm. gave birth again, another boy. Mm. She gave birth again, another boy. So she was pregnant. She said on her way to the market, she met with this woman who was a great woman of God. You know those times, coming across a woman who is a prophet, it wasn't common during those times. Yeah. So the woman told her, God said, I should tell you, you've been praying a prayer, and he, the Lord, has heard your prayer. He said, I should tell you that the child you are carrying is mm. going to be a girl. Wow. And I, the Lord, will use her to do great and mighty things. My God. So she said she received that prophecy in good faith. She went back home doing her normal duties. She used to pray, thank God for that prophecy. So one day, she she was in labor while she was packing her things to go to the hospital. Coincidentally, she met with this prophetess again. Mm. Then the prophet asked her where she was going. She said she was in labor. Then the prophetess said, I wouldn't allow you to go to the hospital. You stay at home. I would help you deliver the baby. My at God. Home. So it was the prophetess that I came at home. And the prophetess named me Rose because that was her thing. Wow. So my mom that named me Rose, it was the prophetess that named me Rose. So growing up and everything, even in my area, from church and everything, they used to call me Odiu for Barrows. From my infancy. Yeah. So, grew up. so because of that name, my mom also made sure she would, you know, take me through that godly uh, 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 life. Mm. not to let me go astray. 
Yes. So from that training and everything, the worldly behavior was me. I'm that type of person. Even though I love to dance, but we didn't get the chance to go to clubs, go to parties like normal young girl growing up or a young boy growing up. Oh. Mm. They instilled in us that godly life and everything. That's right. So when I came to Ghana, before even I came to Ghana, there were times when I sleep, I have dreams and all that thing. It was so confusing. So one day, one of my aunties, he said, mm. ah, I've been telling me certain things about one of your children. Which one of your children had a prophecy about her life? Mm. And my mom said, it was not. I said, ah, when she sleeps, does she see things in her dreams? Then my mom said, yes. Then my auntie laughed. She didn't say anything. <laughs> so when I came to Ghana, going to school and all those things, when I get to a place, whatever I do, it draws attention. If I want to stand in front of people to lead and do everything, I realize that everything goes on well for me. Mm. So I knew that no, there was something special about my life. That's so right. those people who knew me from school, my classmates, they will tell you, Everything they do, I get myself involved. SU, I'm there. Entertainment, mm. I'm there. Sports, I'm there. Everywhere. I was just all over the place. Mm. But after I completed school, it was in SS that I gave my life to God. But when I got out of school, there was one day I was going to church, then the man of God called me and told me, do you know that God is going to use you? Mm. And I'm just standing looking at him said, yes, you are going to sing. A time is coming. The whole world will hear about you. My and even God. if you get to it, it is through you that people will get to see your husband. That people will get to know your husband. Since that prophecy, mm. I decided not to do my life anyhow. My God. So when you ask anybody about me, they will tell me, unless maybe that person has an issue. But those people who truly know me will tell you, all my life has been about church, home, choir rehearsals, church, home, choir rehearsals. Mm. So from that prophecy, mm -hmm. that was when I knew that, no, God had something to do with my life. So I should, I should not live my life now. That was how I took Christ seriously, and that was how I began in my journey with Christ. Wow, this is a great journey. Uh, Anik Goddard says TLC way back in school. <laughs> oh, <laughs> great. Maybe says, Wow, great testimony! Great testimony. And again, um, Anik Goddard says, Wow, God is faithful. Osro Babeki. She wants mommy to sing a japa for me. He says, Mommy, kindly sing a japa for me. <laughs> we'll get there. <laughs> definitely, definitely we will get there. Wow. This is this is amazing. And your journey is so 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 amazing. Now I know you've told us about how you got yourself into the music two thousand and um six and then you had to put the song till 2013 that is what you said yeah. now would you also tell me when you decided to record what were some of the challenges especially i mean recording a song and then you put the song uh, 2013 tell us a little bit of the challenges you faced as a as a gospel I am musician glad that you, asked me this. <laughs> you know sometimes when people see us on tv we look all beautiful mm. shiny here and there they feel that oh this girl just started out of nothing mm. she had she was born with a golden spoon in her mouth she mm. doesn't have issues mm. but the issues are bad. My i God. How I even how I even recorded my very first album was a miracle. Wow! Because I was doing backing vocalists for people trying to save, but the money wasn't enough. It didn't do anything. So one day I went to church. Mm. While singing, there was this young man who walked to me. He said, "I really love your voice." So I said, "How do you know that?" I said, "I think." He said, have you planned to come out with an album? I said, yes, I have dreams of coming out with an album. But mm. where to start? 
Because even when I told my dad that I wanted to come out of he told me, my dear, go to school. Get mm. your degree. Find a job. When you are done, you are getting your salary. And you want to do music, you can still use your own salary to pay for whatever you might be. So I'm mm. not interested in you doing this. Mm. So I had to pray, pray, pray to God. So when this young man called me, he said, I have been led. I want to help you. Wow. But I can't produce this song. Mm -hmm. Because I'm not a producer and I don't know how it is done. Mm. But I want you to go and ask for the amount it's going to cost to do mm. an album, like a full album. Mm. But because I've been a BV for years, you know, yeah. doing the for other people. So I knew the cost. So I told him that every song is 150 Ghana both times. Mm. So and 1.5 million. Let me say that. Those days. Those days. So he told me to calculate nine songs. When I calculated it was 12.5 million, if I'm not mistaken. Mm. He said, okay. The following day when we got to church, this guy gave me this money. 12.5 million CDs. My Cash. God, just like that. He said, like that. Mm. And yet, for the catcher, I say, I like you. I want to do nothing. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Nineteen people say, hey, and then, and then, we are still be boil cry and we, 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 and mm. I thought that after doing the song, the moment you take it to a producer, you are done. Mm. Because he told me when I get a producer, I should give him the money back so that he can also support other people who also want to come out. That's right. But it wasn't an easy journey. He said, imagine 2006, mm. 2013, how many people who huh. even wait? I'm for telling eight you. Years. Mm. For eight years. Before, so when do I get the money? He said, you know, I've not gotten a producer yet. I called two to three different producers who have gotten the name in Ghana. One of the producers even insulted me when I called him and told him I wanted him to uh, produce my song. And these were his exact words. Mm. Those were his exact words. Mm. I didn't give up. I gave my song to other producers. The songs were with them. I would be calling them day and night, day and night. Hmm. So one day, I went to church. The one young man asked me, so, Mommy, what have you done so far? Like, have you thought of coming with an album? I said, yes, but I have an album. <laughs> Nobody wants to mind me. Yes, he so. said, I still need a favor from God. Hmm. Why don't you let us come in? A hundred days of prayer and see mm. what God will do. I had spoken to my dad several times to mm. support me, but he told me he won't. I should talk to my elder brother. Mm. I said, You are my father, you don't want to help me. My elder brother also has a family. So I can't rely on that. That's so right. I had to pray for a hundred days. Hundred days. Pray, yes. Praying and praying and praying and praying and praying for hundred good days. My God. praying, and when I pray, I just call my dad, check on him. Oh, how are you doing? Mm. He said, oh, I'm fine. How is everybody? I don't ask him anything. I just kept on praying, and I didn't target anybody in my mind. Mm. I just told God to bring my destiny helper. My God, somebody who could help me bring the son out, my and that God. was my prayer. My I God. was praying and praying and praying and praying. praying. Sometimes I take the CD, my demo, mm -hmm. put it on the ground, on the floor, mm. lie down on it, pray, cry, cry. Sometimes I sleep on it for a morning. Hmm. One day, I called my dad and I was speaking to him how he's doing. Then he said, Ah, but the last time he told me you're going to do music, how far with your music? And I said, ah, but I spoke to you about my music. He said, you couldn't help me, so I'm there. Hmm. He said, okay, I hear me, I'm to work. Later, we we'll talk. Then he left me. My God. I was, I was praying and praying. One day, my dad came to Ghana. Because he comes to Ghana twice in every year. Because he was still in Liberia. Liberia. Oh, okay. After the war. 
Mm. Yes, my dad was working there. So after the war, during the war, he was still there. He didn't come. Wow. We only came and left my dad. Yes. He was still there. <laughs> he was still there working. So um, I called my younger sister and said, ah, dad said he was coming to Ghana. Mm. Is he in? Then my dad took the phone from my sister. Mm. Yeah, yes. And I said, yes, dad. He said, ah, but you said you wanted to do music. I have got money for you to do the music. And you are sitting there asking me, what are you going to do? Or something. <laughs> ben Jario. <laughs> you see, a That's right. Let nobody think that God doesn't see our struggles, Jesus. doesn't see our pain. Mm. I am one of the only things. I have gone through pain in my ministry. My God. But I always thank God that God is always there for me when I need him the most. Oh, Jesus. If anybody is watching me or listening to me today, I don't know the pain. Mm. Or anything they've been through in life, they shouldn't give up. Yes, Lord. They should put their trust in God. Jesus. At the right time, God will give himself mighty in their life. Yes, Lord. That alone made me know that indeed God was with me. Mm. When I met my dad, everything I ever needed for that first album to be released, he gave it to me cash in dollars. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. He asked me, what do you need? I said I wanted money to do my CDs. Mm. He gave me the money. I want the money to do my video. He gave me the money. My everything God. I ever wanted. Mm. Even the money to put that in Yami Ye on TV mm. of 100 million, my father gave it to me. My and God. that was how the song was all over. He didn't know who I was. Mm. But all over the place. In Kumasi till now, Yami Ye is all over. Uh. And so I always say that Yami Ye is one of my songs. That you can't take from the system because a lot of prayer, a lot of fasting went into that song. That's and right. I can even put it down to match with even songs that people release to today. That's right. And we saw the fire of God in that song. That's right. Anytime people listen to that song, there is healing. That's Things healing. happen when people listen to that song. Right. My father gave me the money. So within two days, mm. and I shot my video. Within that two days, my scene and everything was ready. My God. And I went to all the TV stations in Accra and placed my video. And it was just playing all the, for two months continuously, non stop. Mm. And that's how come we will say, yeah, you got into this industry. That was eight years ago, 2013. Wow. And that's how it been to come. And so sometimes when I'm doing certain things for God, people who don't know me will be like, oh, yeah, where well, they're not trained. But my family and people who are closer to me, those who have like this what I've gone through, know that no. When it comes to my ministry work, I don't talk with it at all. Mm. Nothing interests me. Even when I'm sick and I think that I have to go and minister somewhere, it's like a burden on me. I just want to go for and have the yes and I'm one of them. And that's how it has been. So it, it has not been easy. The journey has not been easy. Even now that we feel so. We're getting somewhere a little bit. And mm. easy. And yet, wow. easy at all. Wow. Miss Palo Ventures says, great testimony. My God. Um, and Nick got it. So say, wow. Great testimony. Me cry. I say, me share that time. Not so for my me and yes, said they will say you a baba, a meeting, a baba, a pana, a ye, oh, bumpy a hundred days. Now one papa will be bumpy one day, two days, three days. No, we'll give you up. Now for so for my me to pray for hundred days. Catch me at a point, did you feel like giving up? I wanted to see results. My God. I wanted to see results anyway, anyhow. My God. So I Thinking about the days. But the hundred days from the sea and you said my bomb fire. Hundred days in the crap anyway, I saw results. Hundred days I'm very yet. So I want me will say I'll cook over to me. Yes. So do work then you want and make him understand that you don't have any other person. And you're no pen a wa. 
But when you are praying and you have doubts, is it even going to work? Mm. Is it going to be possible? That is when issues will not go the way you really want. Mm. And God knows everything. everything. You have mm. no one. Mm. Bless you. No one else will. Because you know, even if you listen to my song, my God, as I said, God gives us free yeah. free protection yeah. with no condition attached. Who mm. will give you something to this Ghana today? Oh. Without asking for something. Oh. You understand? So if you have a God who will give you something like this with no conditions attached, what else or who else do you want to go to and leave that God? My God. Yeah. Jesus. What what a wow, Emmanuel Kusi say, Wow. Um Adelaide Boatinam from so say inspiring. Oh my goodness. Um Miss Palosi, oh yes, God is faithful. Now, also for mommy, this is not part of the interview, but you see what you went through, the courage, yeah. the faith. Obi Obi yeah. go through similar thing or feels like I want to give up within maybe one minute or so. Please, I want you to pray for such a person. Obi Abrabo Ayediamano. Uh de one especially in this moment. But in ya me efa umu ne awa de nya me en e ye wa brabumu emma wit me nya u provision sika o papa de ba ye e de ye nyuma en nya me ye en nambe be would you please lift a prayer on somebody who is watching you right now, please? Okay. Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to thank you so much for this awesome thing. You said in all things, we should give you thanks for the good days of our days. And so we offer our thanks to you today. Father, in the name of Jesus, I suffer to the your blood. Anybody who is going through pain, anybody who is going through a lot of sorrows, anybody who is going through distress, I pray that Father may you remember them. Give them a new song, put a new song in their mouth to sing. Give them a testimony, make a way where there seems to be a way. But you are the God who sings the best and nobody can say no. And when you say no, nobody can say yes. You are the God who opens a door and nobody can cheat. I pray in the name of Jesus, Father, show yourself mighty one more time. You did it 2,000 years ago and you delivered the Israelites out of the hands of the Egyptians. You have done it before and you can do it again. Father, I pray that you prove yourself mighty one more time. Father, yes, give them testimony. Those who are going through problems in their marriages, those who yes, are going through problems in their businesses, those who are going through problems in their finances, those who are even married but unable to give birth. Jesus. Father, those people who are even praying for marriage. God Father, prove them. Oh, yes, Lord. Time, oh, yes, Lord. Prove yourself one more time, oh God. Jesus. Prove to you that you are the God. You Jesus. are the God, the creator of heaven and earth. You My are the God. first and the beginning and the end. Yes, Father, oh God, show yourself mighty. There is no power that is greater than your power. There is no other God that is greater Jesus. than you, oh God. For you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Yes. Father, oh God, we pray, oh God, that you will give us a testimony one more time. Yes, Anyone Lord. who has ever Shed tears and they are watching me listening to me right yes, now. Lord. Father, I pray, whatever their problem is, Jesus. Father, I pray they need you now in their lives. Father, show yourself mighty. Father, prove yourself one more time in yes, their lives. Give them a testimony and put a new song in their mouth. Father, yes, a day like this again today, we will say thank you because you have done it exceedingly and abundantly in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray. Amen. Amen.